Well, hello everyone. Uh, K Kim here from the Traders Club. Uh, thank you for tuning in uh, once again to our midweek update. Midweek update with K Kim. Uh, again, my name is K Kim, and uh, well, hope you guys are enjoying your week thus far. Today is October seventh, Wednesday. It's around six o'clock here in the Twin Cities. The weather's uh, weather's getting a little bit chilly here. I don't know where you live at, but. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's fall weather. The leaves are changing. It's, um, it's, it's my favorite weather, uh, favorite weather, favorite season, actually. And so anyway, um, so this week uh, we, we've saw some uh, positive uh, days, last couple of days on the, on the market here. And so we're going to start with Dow Jones Industrial Average. We're currently looking at a weekly chart here on the Dow Jones. And obviously, you know, I don't know if you looked at my, um, I recently written, wrote an article last Friday, actually, last Saturday or Friday, I wrote an article on the S&P 500 talking about that double hammer uh, deja vu. And you can see that we have something similar happening on the uh, Dow Jones as well. You can see that long hammer there, right? You can see the hammer candle there on this weekly chart on the Dow Jones. And obviously we didn't see a follow through. So something we always talk about here is that, you know, when you do, when you do your candlestick analysis, what you want to see, you want to see a follow through because it cannot stand alone. If you just look at these hammer candles right about here, you can see that that hammer, uh, you know, when we, when we saw a follow through after that, that's when it became strong, right? Same thing happened here. You see that hammer right here right on the weekly 50 ma and then we saw that follow through and then that became strong uh same thing happened right about here you see that weekly hammer right there and then we saw the follow through next week and then we saw that uh strength afterwards as well and here here's a here's a good here's a very very good um example of uh, you know, uh, what, what was happening uh, last, you know, like in, with this candle, right? You can see that obviously this candle really didn't amount to anything because what happened that week after that, we did not see the follow through. That's exactly what happened back in 2011, August, right? What happened was uh, we saw that big hammer, you see it right here, and we didn't see follow through. As you can see right there, we saw actually decline after that. We saw tweezer bottom, and then we saw a shooting star there, and we saw follow through next day, and then it looked like a bullish engulfing pattern, and then came bit bearish engulfing, and then we had an invert hammer, and then finally we had a hammer there. Do you see that what was happening? But the important thing about this hammer right here is the follow through, okay? I want, you, I, want you, I want you to keep that in mind, that follow through, right? You see that follow through? And then we continue for a couple of weeks. We pull back. But here's the important part of that pullback. When it pulled back, did it come make lower low? No, it did not. Because if this was going to be a downtrend, that's exactly what you want to see. I have a little bit of sore throat and sinus, so if, if my voice sounds funny, obviously I love the fall weather, but every time when the transition happens i seem to get sick at least once or so <laughs> so my my voice a little bit funny here so keep that in mind anyway so so if this would have came down and made a lower low that would have been what lower high and lower low that's the inauguration of a downtrend correct yes but that did not happen did it when we came down we pulled back but we created higher low and then what happened after that 2011 well, the trend continued on for years, for four years. So when I do long-term analysis, please do not just dispute that. Do not ignore that because there are people out here who are calling market crash, global market meltdown, and everything else. And though it could have happened, but again, we gotta, we must make sure, we must let the price session dictate where the market is going. Not your opinions, because you know what? Your opinion a lot, your feelings a lot, your emotions a lot. Because you know what? You're not logical, you're not fair, you're greedy, you're selfish. Most people are, right? <laughs> when it, especially when it comes to the market, we're, 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 we're swept, swept away by our emotion. That's what makes, a, makes us human. And obviously, I, what I'm saying when I say greedy, you're, you're selfish, we have a traits of that. I'm not saying we're always like that. And there are times we're fair, there are times we're loving. But especially when it comes to money, we tend to become 
selfish. Let's be honest. And you guys probably seen some of the movies. Ah, uh, was it a uh, one of the Wall Street movie, right? Michael Douglas coming out saying that greed is good because greed motivates. Well, I do not agree with with that sentiment or sentiment statement because greed is not good. Because when you're greedy, you do whatever it takes to make money in, in despite of what it's going to do to others. So, yeah, if you say it like, well, Michael Douglas saying it with all like he's a hardcore, you know, stockbroker. Oh, greed is good because it's going to give you motivation. Without greed, you're not going to have any motivation. Yeah, but then you would scam people. That's not a good thing. Greed is not a good thing, right? So, obviously, I'm not in this video to talk about moral uh, morals here so obviously let's let's forget about that but let's get back into our subject here so we talked about the hammer that needed to follow needed follow through we didn't see the follow through it pulled back it looked like it was going to continue lower and it made bears very very happy and then we threw a shooting star very very interesting right on that weekly titanium right here very very interesting to note that same thing happened in 2011 right on that shooting star as well and then we pull back we threw a hammer right here again and currently we are seeing follow through however let me just get a sip of water here so <clears throat> so um well today's wednesday so we've got two more days of trading session i think tomorrow's a fed minutes as well so that's going to give some you know um volatility throughout the day so let's just say if this was Friday, let's just say today's Wednesday though, but let's just say today was Friday and this is the end of, end of the week candle, then obviously nothing is 100%, nothing is guaranteed in the market, but let's talk probabilities. If this was Friday, I can, I can give high probability to the buyers that we'll get at least a couple weeks of bullish run. We might get a little bit of pullback and then continue on. At least high probability of that happening, right? Obviously, looking at the weekly chart, are we still in a primary, major, major primary term uptrend? Yes, we are. We're still called. I mean, I've been talking about this for how many, long, how many, how many months now, right? It's very redundant what I've been talking about. I, I've been promoting this primary term uptrend, uh, not because as I promote this, I, I, I get some kind of gain. No, I just simply looking at it as, as long as we're in a primary term uptrend without a clear signal that it has been reversed, we must respect. We must respect. Do you want to live your life like if the market is down, you're very super bearish. When market goes up, you're super bullish. There are people like that, right? You know, it's, it's almost interesting about that human psychological behavior is that that's how humans are is that you know when when we're bearish we're super bearish when we're bullish we're super bullish when we're bearish we're very bearish we're bullish bearish bullish but and then you're 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 emotionally just roller coaster every single day right every single day you're roller coaster it's funny how people act like that with everything else as well for example, like let's say, um, let's say just, okay, so I don't always monitor who follows me on Twitter and stock tweets. I don't follow that. I don't always monitor who subscribed to my blog and stuff like that. I don't. But sometimes, you know, it gets my attention. And here's what I found out. Um, just, just, let's just example for a Twitter and stock tweets. If I make a bullish call and then in that week, if market isn't bullish, I lose some followers. And then I, I write an article on, on the weekend saying that we have, you know, weekly bullish or weekly bullish hammer that, that, is, that looks a lot like 2011, which could promote bullish sentiment coming in the week. And then when it happens, well, I get more followers. <laughs> that's, that's how people work. That's not what you want to be, though, if you truly want to be a trader, if you truly want to understand this market. You guys know what I'm talking about? That's not the way to go because that's not the way to look at the market. Everybody can be bearish when market is bearish. Every punk can be bullish when market is bullish. When market is bullish, everybody shout out bullish things. When, when, when market is bearish, everybody shout out bearish things. The hardest part as a trader is when everybody's bearish in the market, can you stick with your analysis and stick with your direction? and not be 
emotionally swept away by the people or, or by the you know market's volatility that's the hardest part right it's interesting to me just this is just, just a psychological behavior of us of people right anyway so looking at a daily chart here on the dow jones when we go to line chart here we actually are cultivating something in a minor term don't are we not you can see that we are actually cultivating higher high again we're looking at a more of a minor to intermediate term there and then we are cultivating higher low so you can see that we are we actually cultivated higher high there and we have cultivated low high what does that mean is not that we are cultivating we are kind of forming minor term bullish uptrend are we downtrend still as far as an intermediate term i can't call it a downtrend per se at this point because we really you know if this thing gets up here and then if this thing falls that will be more like intermediate term lower high and they'll be more like lower low at that time i mean i mean right about here but if if, if today's sentiment is something similar to 2011 if this thing started doing something like this and we're start making creating higher lows and higher highs that's what we call primary time uptrend all right this is a bottom and higher low higher low and higher low and so what you want to really pay attention to on the indices if you think if you believe that this market will continue higher and if you're you know if you agree with some of my analysis that I've done last couple or a couple months or so, then what you want to really look out for is obviously some of these important levels are obviously first level is 17,000 17, on the Dow Jones level here. But more important than this resistance level is the cultivation, right? The cultivation of these lows and highs. Because that's how you see if bulls or bears are who's winning. Currently, the minor term buyers are winning. That's for sure. Intermediate, intermediate term, it, it's... I think still there's a lot of fear in the market because what happened, right? A few months ago, obviously in a primary, major primary term, we're still major primary term bullish, right? So sentiment is very, very similar to 2011. What's happening here? So this is a this is one of those uh, you know I'll call it a decision time, decision time, right? So if 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 the if the market starts to get above 17,200 level or so, this is where the seller is going to start to get very, very nervous. Okay, even if we get there, doesn't mean it's going to straight up. There are certain other levels that you need to get above, and I will say that this is a level that uh, you, would, you know, buyers declaring victory about seventeen thousand six hundred level on the Dow Jones. So looking at this, also another thing that I just want to um, show to you on the Dow Jones is this. Here, and I want to just put in um, parabolics. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this um, indicator. I don't always um, look at parabolic SAR. Um, I don't always do that, but you know sometimes it's a tool that if it confirms with the other signals like price action, we looked at hammer, we looked at primary term uptrend, and all of that. And when you have other confirmation, and then you have a parabolic flipping and kind of confirming your analysis, and sometimes it can be valuable. So when we look at the weekly parabolic, we just let's just uh, you know look at this move right here. And every time when parabolic flipped, we flipped here, parabolic flipped there, parabolic flipped here, uh, parabolic flipped here, parabolic flipped here, uh, flipped there, flipped here, parabolic flipped there, parabolic flipped there, parabolic flipped there, flip, 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 and flip and flip. So if we just look at this, every time when parabolic parabolic flips, right? Because usually they're at the top or at the bottom, that little dot there. Um, what it is is really the momentum thing, right? The momentum, the downshift, the down momentum has started to change, and the momentum is kind of getting back up. That's what it's saying. Obviously, nothing is um, guaranteed in the market. Nothing is absolute in the market. Anything can happen in the market. All we have is a problem. I always always have to say that because I have a lot of new viewers just kind of don't understand how the technical analysis work. So. It's not holy grail. It's not just because we have parabolic flip. This is like very, very safe to just, you know, bet your farm. That's not how it works. But probability suggests that 
when the parabolic flips and when we have a candlestick kind of confirm again this this was friday and parabolic flip i would give at least a good i i would, I would say there's a high chance and we will have a good bullish run into about at least two weeks before pulling back up pull, pulling back down again but if we just look at this since 2009 every time parabolic flip we get at least several weeks of bullish run a minimum several there there are times where this thing just went on because each dot it represents week so two, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen weeks bullish run third times fifteen weeks this might be this looks like a twenty weeks so this guy right here that one parabolic right there how many weeks after that nobody knows it could be just a two weeks and then fall over we don't know that but probability suggests that that's a that's a good signal. But again, though, keep in mind that we're looking at a weekly chart. What does that mean? It means it's not finalized. So if this thing, let's say Thursday, Friday, we get a sell-off, this thing becomes a shooting star, that parabolic probably is going to be gone and stay up here. You see that? So keep in mind, look at these weekly charts that I've, as I've showed you on Friday on your chart and do your analysis, final weekly analysis there. Um, for the buyers, definitely it's a good thing that we have reclaimed that 50 MA. You can see that 50 MA is threatening the buyers, and we came down with through a shooting start right on that uh, 50 MA there. You can see that 50 MA now is kind of slightly, slightly kind of you know uh, just hooking that up right here and just kind of hovering and just kind of getting below these candles, kind of you know supporting it now. You can see that 10 and 20 MA did flip back up. This is the first time they crossed since uh, right about here. They crossed bearish, and then this first time they're crossing back up to the up to the upside. They try to cross here, didn't happen. Obviously, this shooting star is no longer in power. That it has reclaimed that. So short term, if we stay above 16,711, uh, that could be a good signal that it might get at least back up to retest it. Uh, you know, daily 100 SMA there on the Dow Jones. So let me go to S&P 500 and look at things here. Also, good news on the S&P 500 here is what? That, that, that 50 MA on the daily chart, right? That 50 day moving average did act as resistance here. You can see that. And um, what we see is basically that that's where a lot of sellers were found and brought it down and you remember we, we talked about last midweek update video right last wednesday we talked about this being a what evening star reversal that that has uh you know that has um led by the shooting star candle there and we talked about last wednesday we talked about this becoming a morning star reversal led by this doji and we need to follow through and once we saw that follow through the same thing happened here you can see that we got a we got shooting star, and then we saw follow through, bang, right? And then you can see that morning star, bearish candle, doji, bullish candle, boom, right? So we saw that. And what I was looking, what I was watching out for is that it was that week, it was that daily 50 MA. Why? Because that 50 MA did act as a lot of resistance. Again, it's not that because everybody's watching 50 MA, it's just people are looking to, once it gets a certain pop, they're looking to, they're like, they're looking to sell, right? They're looking to sell. And so there, these are some of the levels. It's a guidance, it's a reference point. And so currently, if I showed a line chart, we're just right on that. We're just right on there. As far as a, you know, as far as the horizontal resistance concern, it's right on that. But good news is for the buyers, at least in the minor terms, where we have reclaimed that 50 MA. 10 and 20 MA is just now um, crossing back up. I think if I draw a, uh, just a tight resistance right there, we gotten above that. You see that right there. So we we slightly gotten above that. So that's a good sign. Also, I did what I did realize on the um, S and P five hundred and other indices too, is that we do have bullish divergence sentiment. I know it's not a true divergence because if you want to see a true bullish divergence, you will see something like this. It makes a lower low. And then you know, uh, Mac they make a higher high. Uh, I mean, higher low on the RSI. That's exactly what happened back in 2011. Right here. Is it 2011? No, right there. This is a 2011 right here. This right here. See that? Boom. Bang. Bang. Right. Lower low. Higher low. So we don't have a price action giving us a lower low. It's more like an equal low. 
you know, slightly higher low, but equal low there. If you look at your Russell, you'll definitely see um, Russell 2000 index, you'll definitely see a high, lower low there. So equal lows, higher low on MACD, what does that mean? It just means that there's more, there's there's a lot of buyers are jumping in right now. Those are value buyers. These these people are, uh, you know, dip buyers. Um, these people are, can become a long term, but a lot of times these people are very, very scared. These people just walk in it right now. If something goes wrong, these people just get out. That's what you're gonna see a lot of volatility, you know, on the, on the market right now. As soon as you see a little bit of bearish action, just everybody exits. So that's what these people are. These people, a lot of times, makes the peaks and 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 you know and bottoms because if we get something going from this point on these people will stay through so that's what basically that's what this saying is that there's just some clandestine buyers in this vicinity and these moving out or these oscillators are kind of acting towards that what's happening as far as the buying ratio is concerned so looking at this s p 500 pretty similar to dow jones but it hasn't made new highs yet like dow jones did so that's a little bit interesting there uh you know and then after that obviously if we just go this level this is very very important level we're trading at 2000 level on the s p on the spiders 200 level it's right on that 2000 level it has acted as a resist or support in the past it is acting as a resistance of before so if the buyers want to really get some momentum and really put some psychological damage to bears and sellers we must get back above this level but you know what though this market is never going to make things easy right they never do they never make things easy so there's a chance that this might pull back come all the way down worst case scenario and then get back up or if this thing falls and then this thing comes out make new lows and this becomes a very very hefty low, minor primary to lower high we could get into a correction so this is a decision time this is a decision this is very very important level very very important level next few days very very important going to next week very very important another scenario might be that this is what i call um a jumping over the fence a lot of times when you're dealing with this important pivot like this what they do is they just jump over it just gap up and then just continue higher Right? If that's the case, we'll come down to about 2,000, come up to about 2,050, and then we're probably gonna pull back and then get up. But I, I really think if the market wants to see a complete reversal and, and you wanna see an increasing in probability of that happening, we wanna see this in getting up and getting at least about 2,010. 2010 on the S&P 500 and then hit 2,040. I think once we hit 2,010, I think we'll, we, we will hit 2,030 to 40. And pull back. It doesn't matter how 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 low pulls back, as long as it pulls back, you know, around 1970, 2000, and then that will be the reversal there. So again, tomorrow isn't that interesting? We're getting we're we're in a very very uh, important level, and tomorrow we're 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 gonna have the Fed meetings, and exactly that's what happened last Fed meeting. So the people are like, well, that's what happened last time. So that's what Bear's gonna say, right? That's what the sellers gonna, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. It's gonna look like uh, you know they're they're gonna come through, but then towards the end of the day, you're gonna have a huge long upper wick, and when I'm shooting side, it's gonna fall over, and the whole market is gonna crash. That's what they're gonna say. But let me tell you right now, nobody truly knows. Nobody truly knows exactly how it's gonna play out. So, next today's important, right? I just showed you how to look at weekly chart, look at how to look at parabolic SAR, look at some of the moving averages, looking at your weekly candles. It's very, very important we do that. Let's go through this com, uh, com <laughs> I almost called it a Comcast, uh, NASDAQ composite here, and uh, uh, see how they, how they look. NASDAQ composite is not quite at the high Z, you know what I mean? That was the highs. This is what happened there with the shooting star. But we're finding quite a bit of momentum there, right? So, uh, you know, obviously looking at things more minor term, it was it was it was very very volatile because it looked like this was gonna become a some kind of a lower low type of deal. What it did was it came down back at the lows, and then we bounced. So we are really not forming lower low. Right, I mean, you can see that when you, that's not really a low low. If the bears wanted this thing to crash, we want to form a lower low and a lower high. <coughs> Excuse me, right, that would be a downtrend. So we really technically don't have downtrend yet. We have a lot of fear for sure, 
but we technically don't have any downtrend. If anything, this looks more like some kind of an uptrend, possibly looking at a candlestick there, higher low there, and obviously import level is 4,900 level on the NASDAQ composite, and that's a very, very important level. We get up here, um, you know what I'm saying? That's going to be above the moving averages. It's going to be above the long-term moving average. It's going to be above the um, 100 and 200 SMA as well, right? So looking at this, we're just, just getting some support here on the 10, 20, and they haven't crossed. So the ISM is a little bit lagging right now compared to Dow Jones and the S&P 500. We have a gap area here. A lot of times when you have a gap area like this, it's going to get, you know, a gravitate towards that. So there could be, you know, it's going to fill that gap. But many times when the, these gaps get filled, it becomes resistance in the short term. So something to keep an eye on, uh, on that. Russell 2000. Um, obviously, also, you know, just the one thing I was talking about the Russell 2000 is that we do have a textbook bullish divergence on the Russell 2000 right here. You can see the bullish divergence. That's kind of what we talked about this week and here at the club. Uh, that's exactly the same as what we saw back in 2011. You can see that lower low on the price action and higher lows on the oscillator. And I explained it to you what these means. And obviously that was a bottoming process. High, higher, 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 high, higher low. And then the market continued at least for four years after that. And we're back at that level. It's very, very similar sentiment we are forming right now, right? So obviously for Russell 2000, important level will be 11,080. 11, actually 1,100, sorry about that. 1,180, it's very, very important level. Once we get above that level, there's a good chance that this uh, Russell in this index could also, um, could also um, reverse, right? And one thing I just wanted to uh, go back to, I forgot to talk about, is a weekly chart. Um, important moving averages to watch is this weekly chart. And I know we I just talked about what? I just talked about the you know the parabolic SAR, I talked about the long-term uptrend support, where I just you just see that right here, and I talked about candlesticks and everything else. But also keep in mind when you're looking at your weekly, look at your weekly 200 simple moving average where they at today. Right? Then weekly 200 SN came down, act as resistance, tanked, went up, act as resistance, not tanked, but pulled back got up, pull back a little bit, 200 SMA weekly acting as support, short term got up, came down, buyers here, a lot of buyers here, got up, came down, and we're just right on the weekly 200 SMA as well. And same thing as S&P 500, and it's not a 200 SMA on the S&P 500, but rather it's the 100 SMA. It's interesting though, 200 SMA did act as resistance here, but it's really the 100 SMA right there. And I explained it last week why these moving averages work. It's not because somebody just threw this moving average. It's not because everybody's looking at these moving averages. It's because people who bought some stocks down here, invested some there, they're very, very happy because they made a lot of money. Or people who are trying to short sell it by some put, thinking that we're gonna have a major crash. They're very, very pissed off. And so they remember this le this level. So when this when we have something similar happening, now there we're getting that attention. And that's why these moving averages work. Not because we just threw some moving averages on the computer. Well, just because I threw some, you know, support level, some draw lines in with my crayon. It's funny how people say stupidest things, but that's not why it works, right? So looking at this, looking at this moving, or looking at this in this, I, you know, I, I didn't mean to, it just always happens every time. Man, I just, sometimes I feel like I need more money, more time than 30 minutes. Because there's so much, there's so so many other things I'm not talking to you guys about in this in these videos. Because there's so much going on in the market, but um, this is as fast as I can go. I just be honest, I cannot do any less than 30 minutes looking at four major indices. I just it's impossible. I don't know how other people do it. So looking at these, uh, you know, um, you know, major indices. Uh, if I summarize what's happening right now is we are seeing some minor term uh, bullish action here, some accumulation here. There are a lot of value buyer, dip buyer. Um, and these people can become a longer term. They want to see some evidence of that. But these people also are very, very fragile. So these buyers who are buying at the bottom here, what they're doing is if they see anything that make them nervous, they will exit, thus creating a lot of volatility, right? But if we are seeing some some follow through this week until you know next week, these people stay through and then they'll buy some more as they start to dip again. And that's how these guys will make money. 
money, right? And so that's how it's gonna create uptrend. So it's very, very important level we're dealing with. This is a decision time. Tomorrow, Fed minutes, we're probably gonna get some volatility. It's gonna be important. Again, what's gonna be important is a Friday. I give you, I gave you on a weekly chart what you should look for. So Friday on the weekly chart, how it closes, what does that, what does it tell you? I mean, that's very important. So do your analysis this weekend. If I see anything, I will try to, uh, you know, write an article on the indices regarding that. And uh, we'll go from there. Just pe before we go, I'll just I'll just look at Apple real quick. And I don't want to I just I don't want to look at anything else. Uh, I'll just look at Apple and we'll call it a night for today, right? Apple, despite uh, you know with the market some bullishness today, Apple has been struggling here. Apple, obviously, we're still seeing 50, 50 MA declining, ten and 20, 20 and ten MA declining as well. I mean, we do have a micro term, little bit of bullishness going, but is that a bear flag before going lower? But obviously, though, if market continues higher, I think you know th that eventually will get Apple going. But it's it's a kind of fragile uh, situation for Mar Apple. Is that if we see market not seeing bullish? follow through you know rest to next couple days and you know uh next week and we see a sharp sell-off or something like that that could actually make make apple's investors and traders be very very um nervous and 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 that could start to exit and that could make this become a bear flag however you know sometimes these bear flags do not play out uh, what are the good examples? Sometimes bear flag can become a reversal pattern. I start to see more of that happening, but I can't really see. Um, I'm trying to look for like example, but I can't find example. So, what could happen is this is what I what I call grinding works. So a lot of times, what you can do is they grind, they grind, they grind, they grind. So then the bears, what they're looking for is what happened to that bear flag, man? What happened to bear? Come on, come on, that bear flag. And then it no never comes. And then what happens is all of a sudden this thing just shoots up. That could be another scenario, but really the level you really want to watch is about 116.74 level. If you can get above that level, I think uh, there could be more uh, people interesting in, in, in uh, more traders, investors in, investing, in more more solid buyers who's going to uh, hold things much longer. Right now it's very fragile. Uh, people are buying things here, but like, like I said, value buyers, dip buyers, they're they're very short term. They're fragile. If things go wrong, things go south. They will exit quickly. That's why we have a lot of volatility in this vicinity. Um, so anywhere below 107 or so, I think that's kind of that's gonna be a bad level for any buyers. I think that's a level it might get into a huge, uh, very very fearful, uh, you know, level. I think this is still a kind of a confusion level there. Uh, but uh, so if if the you know really you want to track this with the Nasdaq Composite and the overall market, if the market is uh, showing some uh, strength, I, I do think that Apple could get up here, get back up here, and then and then possibly doing something like that. And that would be, you know, if, if everything works out perfectly, if the market is below, that would be the perfect scenario that I'll, I'll be looking for doing something like this and create, thus creating some kind of a higher lows and higher highs there. So, but right now, you know what, looking at a minor term, as far as a sentiment is concerned, uh, it is still a kind of a bearish sentiment here. We have this kind of a, you know, kind of an awkward looking pivot happening right here. Uh, you know, some people can look at this as potentially inverted head and shoulder that possibly be, uh, but we don't know that if it's inverted. If that inverted head and shoulder will confirm, if we do something like that, then definitely that will be a left shoulder, that will be a head, that will be a right shoulder, and that might be uh, some kind of inverted head and shoulder. If not, then this guy is gonna be a more sad face there. So, well, have a great night. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your uh, Wednesday night, and take your uh, take care of yourself so you don't get. You know, you know what's my problem with though when I get sick and stuff like that? It's always, I, it happens every year, I always ignore it. Like my body always says, you know what, you need to rest. Like you need to rest, you're you, you're gonna get sick, you know, like your, your body's saying you're tired, you've been working a lot, you know, you need to rest. You, you shouldn't even be working out because your body's kind of exhausted. But I just, I just, I just love running, I just love working out. And so I do it anyway, ignore it. And then, and then, and then as I work out or run, I overwrite my feelings. You know, and then and then what happens is, and then a couple of days later, boom! I guess like it happens every year, especially when the weather changes. Every year around fall time, I get sick once, and usually I get sick once around fall time, and then I, I'm pretty good throughout the week. And because what happens is, I get, I've learned, and then like, okay, I should have, uh, should have, you know, uh, I should have, uh, you know, uh, be sensitive to that. But I well, I wasn't. I got sick. So then when winter comes, every time I get, I feel like I'm getting sick or a little bit like that, I'm like, okay, I got I to gotta, I gotta rest. 
right? You know what's funny? Trading is kind of like that. When you're first trading, you know, uh, you, 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 don't, you don't see the warning signals. You just kind of go with it. You just go with it. You're like, whatever, you know, and then, and then you get burned or something like that. And then the next time you, you realize certain things and then, and then you, you, okay, okay, I see, I see. So this time you do it differently, right? And somebody said something about uh, the, the difference with the stupid people and the smart people. It's not that they're academically uh, do better than you or, you know, especially in you know, the world of business, in the world of business. It's not that. It's, what it is is really when you make because all people will make mistake. When you make mistake, will you acknowledge that you made a mistake and will you learn from it? And if you learn from it and do better next time, that's a smart person. But if you're stubborn, like you just make excuses, and then um, you just you just you just you just start blaming on everybody else but yourself, well, that's those people are stupid, despite of their you know education or you know academic success or whatever. I thought that was so true. Anyway, so I'm gonna go and lie down, drink some hot tea, watch some Netflix, and then we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys again uh, next week. Next week, I. I I might do live midweek update, but I'm not sure. So um, we'll uh, we'll play by ear. I'll let you know if I go live a day before. Uh, 2016 midweek update uh, is uh, you can sign up for them now uh, on my website. Just go to events and then 2016 webinars. Um, 2016 I actually created for every three weeks versus every two weeks because I mean I know I cancel it a lot and I have meetings that I gotta go to. So every three weeks, but if I feel like I want to do more live events, I have time, I can always create it. So as far as like schedule is concerned, we'll do it every three weeks. And if you sign up, you sign up for once and then you just, you're signed up for whole 2016, you'll get a reminder email and recordings if you can't make it. And it's always, you can always opt out. You just, you know, it's easy to opt out. And so uh, you can sign up on my website, twotradersclub.com and sign up for 2016 webinar if you're interested in it. All right. Well, have a great night. I'll talk to you guys later.